Hey, I'm Kai Satoshi, and today we're going to paint one of those laser backgrounds, the type that they used in photos for the background back at school. Then after we're done, I'm taking a photo. Uh, epic. So in this tutorial, we're going to make a wonderful old background that we, uh, that some of us had back in way back in the day, and uh, it looks like this when we were in school. So here, here's some of the reference images that I got just off the internet, so I don't know who these wonderful people are. But I wanted to look at these and kind of see, see remind myself what these looked like. And um, I even came up with an image that uh, of this little mouse, like he's going to school. And uh, this is uh, another tutorial that's on my Patreon page. But I, uh, so this is really what we're gonna learn. We're going to learn how to do the uh, the whole background, and this is going to come in handy, especially if you know you you just want to play around, maybe put somebody in a background, and the backgrounds you can't get are really not large enough off the internet, and so you know you can just make your own. So this is the one that we're really going to kind of be referencing, and that's the one that I kind of referenced off of my mouse as well. So let's get started. First thing that we're going to need to do is take a look at this background, the, the background behind the lasers actually. So I'm gonna go over to my my gradient tool, which is actually underneath your bucket tool if you're not sure, your bucket tool is usually on top, but if I click on it, I hold it down, I grab my gradient tool, there it is. The shortcut for this is the letter G on your keyboard. So let's say I have my brush select, I'll hit brush, and it comes over to my brush. If I hit G, we'll see it slide down to here. So make sure I have my gradient selected. I come up here and I have this more straight gradient selected, not this circle or any of these other ones, but this straight one. Then I'm going to take a darker blue and I'm just going to kind of come across, just pulling it down. I want to go just slightly darker. And this is just all in how you want to do it. And then I needed to go a lighter blue. We'll come up here and pull it across like this, just like that. Color select this, pull it back, pull it back down. Oops, Control Z, select that again. And there we go. So we're just kind of getting that that look right there. Cool. Next, we're gonna go. We're gonna add a new layer. I'm gonna grab. A brush I'm just gonna grab my circle brush but here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take uh, my transfer off so it's just gonna be an opaque brush and I'm gonna come up here make sure it's a hard edge brush just like that it's not the uh, it's not the soft brush I'm gonna make a straight line with it first let me see I'm gonna grab like a blue right in here and I'm going to make a straight line. Now the way to make a straight, absolute straight line at a 90 degree angle is uh, hold your shift and you can press and it goes to go straight down. I'll do it again so you can kind of see. Even if I'm coming this way with my brush, it's still going to kind of go that way. You can do the exact same thing coming across. So all I'm doing is I'm holding shift and it just makes that straight line. So here we go. I'm going to make a straight line just like that except I want it much thinner. Uh, let's go thinner than that. There we go. So I have my opaque, uh, my opaque line, and that's gonna be our first laser. Now the next thing that we're gonna do is I'm going to switch that over to a soft brush. So it kinda of looks like that. And then I'm going to come over here. This actually should have been to normal when I did that, so I, that's a little mistake, but it doesn't really matter. I'm still, I still got that right there, so that should have been placed on normal. But I'm going to come over to my brush modes, and I'm going to change it to hard light right there. And I'm going to come right back over to my line, and I'm going to do the straight line again. Just like that, except I'm going to press a little bit harder. I messed up on that. There you go. I'm going to press a little bit harder. Perfect. So then I'm going to do the same thing again, but I'm going to come over to Linear Dodge Add. 
And then I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller. And I'm going to make that straight line right down the middle again. Let's do that again. A little bit smaller. Nope, don't like that. Keep going until I get a get one that I like. That's not too bad. Not sure if I like that color though right here, so let me see what we can do here. I pressed uh, Command U. I'm on a Mac. And I'm gonna kind of mess with this color. So I'm gonna saturate it a little bit. I don't like that, I don't want that too bright, so there we go. Yeah, saturated it a little bit. I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm gonna go back in here and make it brighter in here again. So let me try this real quick. I'm gonna make my brush a little bit bigger. That's not too bad if I do that. There we go, I like that one. So you just kind of keep messing with it until you get a look that you like. Um, if we think that this is too wide, the beam, I can do Command T and I can just kind of squeeze it in just like that. And I think I like that, that's pretty good. If uh, you want to do, squeeze it a little bit more, do that. And then if you wanted to go over top of it again, let's see if hard light might look all right. I'll bring this a little bit bigger. Too big. That way it kind of gets a little bit more of a, um, a wider beam off of it. That's not too awful bad. I'm not sure if I'm in love with that though. Let me go make this a little bit stronger of an edge like that and let's see what we get from that. A lot of this stuff is you just kind of playing around with it until you find something that you actually like. I'm going to switch this back over to the linear dodge add. There we go. So I'm starting to like that right there. So with my hard edge circle brush. I'm going to bring that right through the middle. There we go. I like that much better. That's nice. Okay, so when I have, since I have that, I'm going to duplicate this layer a few times. And the way I do that is you can either come over here, or actually you can come up here and go layer, duplicate layer, and my little pop-up screen came over up on my other screen, so I'm going to bring this over here. Press OK and then duplicate your layer. But what I usually do is I just do a shortcut. I do Command J and it automatically pops up over here. So, so I'm going to do this with a few of them. So I have a few of my blues. And I'm going to do one more time and I'm going to bring that one over. I clicked, uh, click to select my my layer. Now I'm going to do Command you. Once this comes up, the hue saturation, I'm going to click on colorize. And then I'm going to move it into more of like a pink range. But we can't hardly see it, so I'm going to have to adjust the saturation. So I'm going to have to saturate it a lot. There we go. That's looking nice. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. And then we can brighten it, lighten it, darken it, however we want to do. Let's go. Saturate it right in there. That's pretty good. But there's a little bit of a difference between the blue and the pink. So I think I'm going to go over top of it like I did the last one. So I'm going to hit B for brush. And so I'm already on what I want, the hard circle brush. And I'm just going to come down just like that. Now we have our lasers. So over here we have a group of uh, our blues. We're going to do the same thing with our pink. Control, sorry, Command J. It's the model Mac. I'm just going to make a few of them. Now I'm going to reference my little mouse, see what I did here. And as we can see, it kind of moves around it here and then the pinks around the other way. So I'm just really kind of model it after that. You can mod it, which is pretty much modeled after this other one that was on the internet. So here's what we're going to do. I'm just going to come over here to, uh, I want to always keep one of the straight ones and I want to keep one of the pink ones, so I'm just going to turn those off. Then we'll come to the next one, and then I'm going to hit Command T. It allows me for, to transform it, and 
just going to turn it and start to bring it however I want. Let's see, how does it, and I'm looking at my reference as I'm doing this. So I have one right about in here, just like that. Go to my next one, hit V for move. V or Command T, or C Command T is either one you want to use. Like I said, with this, it really matters with, you know, however you want to set it up. I think once you get these laser beams in place, it's going to look pretty good. V. Let me turn it here. Make it a little bit longer. Turn it a little bit more. So now I'm just kind of playing with. Now the reason why I did this is, is if you keep one straight, it's a lot easier to um, adjust it, and you won't mess up the um, the thickness of it and everything when you're when you're trying to move it. So that's why I keep one uh, hidden. So I'm out. So I'm just going to do a command J. That way I can manipulate a new one. Let me hide this. Hang on one second. I want to do undo real quick. That way I know which one I'm working on here. Now, now I have it. Like I said, I'm just going to keep looking at my reference, kind of seeing what I want. And once again, open that up, Command J. Turn that off again, and V for move. And that looks pretty good right there. I want to do the exact same thing with my pink ones now. Except now the pink ones come across. So V for move. Make it longer. Just kind of turning it to get it in place. Now, once you have your laser beams all set up, the rest of it is just kind of put them in the place that you like. V. Make it longer. And I need another one, so I'm going to turn this one on. Command J. Turn that back off. And that's pretty much it. I don't think I like, I'm not sure. Let me, let me bring my reference back in here. Um, uh, see how I like this one. Yeah, it's not too bad. Yep, I like that. All right. We can make it a little bit lighter, kind of in this area, if we wanted to, uh, behind the laser beam. So I'll go ahead and do that real fast, quick. Come back down here to where the background is. I just put it over top of it. I'll make a new layer and put it over top of it. That way, in case I mess up, I don't like something. I can always just uh, erase that layer. Let's put it more purpley. G. Puts me back on there for the gradient. That's not too bad. Maybe a little bit darker. And do Control Z a couple times. There we go. Yeah, that's not too bad. So that's about it for the background. I'm going to do a Shift, Alt, Command, E. And what that does is that takes all of my layers and puts them in one layer. So I'm going to bring that one all the way up to the top. So I still have my other layers, but I have this other one that I can look at. So if I wanted to, I can keep all these layers separate in case I, I mess up. Highlight them all, Command, G. That puts them all into one group. And now I can just kind of mess with this one. So if I wanted to do something like uh, adjustments, maybe a brightness contrast, I can work with the whole whole image at the same time. So I can contrast those laser beams a little bit more, just like that. 
Next, if you if you don't like how smooth all this is, and maybe you want kind of that uh, pixely looking thing that you, you you probably see in those old pictures, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do um, go over here to your gradient, but we're gonna take the bucket tool. And we'll come over here to this uh, color of gray. Fill in with a new layer, filter, noise, add noise, and I have it on Gaussian and I'm at 400%. I press OK. Now I'm going to change that layer blending mode to overlay. And then I'm just going to lower the opacity. This, this part comes down to taste, how much opacity you want to be showing. Because as we zoom in, you can see I'm going to turn this on and off. This gives it that kind of pixelated that you will see in a photograph. But like I said, this comes down to taste, so you can up that as much as you want, lower it as much as you want. I like it to have it a little bit lowered. That way there's a little bit in there, but there's not too much where it's overwhelming. And that's it for your laser background. So here is going to be our studio setup for a little picture. So what you can see is just two lights, the uh, camera tripod there in the middle, chair where uh, I will be sitting, and then a light behind that will illuminate behind me so there won't create any shadows. And that's going to help me kind of get the, the white background out of there and be able to slide that laser background in a little bit easier. So that was the studio setup, and I took a few pictures of me and one of my cats. Uh, he's right here, his name's Jake. He's very nice for helping me out. But now I'm just gonna get into the image and take out the background and see what we can do with it.